So whenever I hear people talk about castles in Africa, it's always they talk about slavery castles. Slavery castles, slavery castles, slavery castles. How depressing, right? So to my delight, I came to Ethiopia and they actually have castles for kings and emperors. And it's located here in Gondar, Ethiopia. It's days like this where I get to see cool stuff like this that our people built that I'm glad I came to Africa. So I did that travel and I see you boy. For content on Africa and the diasporas, history, culture, and travels, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification and that like button so this content can be suggested to more people. And if you want to support Travel and Truth, you can do so by buying the new Black History Legends NFTs. These are digital trading cards which feature our iconic ancestors throughout history of Africa and the diaspora. By buying these digital trading cards, it supports the channel to push out great content faster. Links to the NFTs and instructions are below. And you can also support the platform by buying the Travel and Truth merchandise or donating in the links below. After visiting Addis Ababa, I hop on a flight to Gondar, Ethiopia. Gondar was founded by Emperor Facilidus in the 1600s and was made the capital of the empire for over 200 years. During this time, there were six emperors that each built a castle of their own. Emperor Facilidus, Emperor Johannes I, Emperor Iyasu the Great, Emperor Dawit III, Emperor Bakafa, and Empress Mitiwa, who wielded great power during the reigns of her son, Emperor Iyasu II, and her grandson, Emperor Iyaus I. Many of these castles built by these emperors are still in existence to this day. So the next morning, I got in a taxi and headed to the castles to experience them firsthand. Uh, well, you like America? Yes. Uh, what, yes. You, what do you like about America? Oh, all America. Uh, okay. Yeah. Wait, so who is this kid riding in the back? What's up, man? Hello. <laughs> who is he? Uh, this one? Yeah. This one? Yeah. This one? Yeah, yeah, he's the only kid, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 this one is uh, my best friend, son. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I give you the shot, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, sir, we at it. Here in Gondor. All right, let the games begin now. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get a little bit closer and we'll start. Okay. All right, now I am with, uh, I'm, I'm doing a guide this time. <laughs> Uh, what is your name? Uh, my name is Salam, which means peace. All right, so uh, can you give us a little brief history on Gondar? The okay, this this these castles are called Fasil. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the Fasilidas castle, and Emperor Fasil is the first emperor of Gondar, and Gondar is the third capital city of Ethiopia. Okay. Uh, and when the, when Gondar became a capital city of Ethiopia. Uh, he built a castle because after Lalibela, which means the second uh, capital city, there was no permanent capital city. So uh, that's why uh, he uh, he chose Gondar to be a capital city of Gondar. All right. So now we're going yeah. in. Okay. Now the first castle in Gondar was built by Emperor Facilidus, who was most known for founding Gondar and building many monuments all over town. Emperor Facilidus's castle is the biggest in Gondar and is also the most well preserved as many of the ancient structures in Gondar were bombed during wars with European powers. Woo, okay, I dig it, I dig it. Now you were mentioning something about the uh, Aksumite obelisk. Ah uh, yes, the shape of the, the doors are from the Aksum obelisk. Oh. Uh, some people they say that it's a Moorish style. It does look very Moorish. Okay, so this is an interesting tidbit. <laughs> 
you come to Ethiopia and their castles, they have Moorish designs. So those two uh, groups of people were actually communicating with you. This is actually some good shit. What's up, brothers? And this is a diamond of comment. So the royal name, they died here. In our culture, uh, you can't uh, miss the dining table. Uh, you have to sit while everybody uh, finish eating then they uh, go out. It was like that. So the women uh, take a long time, so they dine separately. Okay. And this is where, oh, the women take a long time. Uh, yeah, that's uh, women dining hall and men dining hall. Ah, they, they didn't dine together. Okay, yeah. so this is where the king, so the king would dine here and the queen would dine in other rooms. Okay, so it was like, it was like one of those long yeah, tables. Long table. Yeah, yeah. So this is like one of those, uh, those rooms from uh, Coming to America. Yeah, <laughs> you remember the movie? Uh, no, you never seen Coming to America? Oh, we, we gotta work on that. <laughs> we gotta work on that. Right here is a balcony for the king. Just gonna step right here. The balcony. It's very ancient, so it could break at any moment. But yeah, he had a personal balcony. And actually he was up on the third floor, which you cannot get to because they said it's so fragile that it could collapse. Hey man, we need to, we need to clean this. Yeah. This is what I'm talking about. Hey, listen, yeah. you gonna come to Ethiopia, don't be writing on the walls like this, man. We were here. Man, come on, man, don't, don't be disrespectful. <laughs> Graffiti isn't the only thing on the walls. Built into the walls of the castle are three Star Davids. These Star Davids are there as a nod to the Ethiopian Jews who helped build the emperor's castle. The second castle was built by Emperor Johannes I, who was the son of Basilidus. Johannes I's reign was mostly military campaigns and religious reform. Now, we didn't get to go into his castle as it was closed to the public. Can't go in, we're not charged, this, uh, this building, we can't go in? Oh, okay. You can't go in. But we can see in, I see. Now the glass on this building was actually not originally there. During the military occupation by the Italians, they actually put that glass there. I mean, this is just so impressive. The third castle was built by Emperor Iyasu I, who was the grandson of Emperor Facilitas. He is also known as Iyasu the Great, as he was one of the great warrior emperors of Ethiopia. His reign was mostly known for his military conquests and re-establishing controls over land held by rebel forces. He also sponsored many buildings and churches around Gondar. All right, so what are we looking at here, madam? Uh, this is uh, the third castle uh, which belongs to Emperor Yasu. Emperor Yasu is the son of Johannes. Okay, so grandfather, father, father son. Yeah, and Emperor Yasu was uh, good in foreign relations, relatively uh, from his father and his uh, grandfather's time. And Emperor Yasu uh, was educated in a place called Wahanga. It's like a royal prison. Uh, it's a royal prison. He was educated in a royal prison. Yeah, uh, that prison is uh, <laughs> for the royal family because if they grow up here, they may exercise the luxurious life because everything will be taken by someone else. So they cannot be responsible for the nation. They cannot be the next king. So they go there, they study law, discipline, administration, and all the religious aspects. So it was basically to make them humble. Yeah. So they weren't spoiled kids. Even they may not uh, poison each other for the, for the sake of uh, power. What? Oh, oh wow. Yeah. OK, and so if I. The older would be a king. And if uh, the younger one wants to be a king, he may poison them. So would they separate them? Or they, uh, they oh, live there. Oh, they all live. Yeah. So how do you prevent them from poisoning each other in the prison, the royal uh, prison? They are prevented because it's very strategic place. And Strategical. Yeah, very uh, uh, strategic. And also, uh, they may uh, do something uh, poisoning or something when they come here into uh, power. But there, they don't know. Okay, so it's like they quarantine the children. <laughs> I mean, to make sure that number one, they're not spoiled. They don't grow okay. up as like little spoiled brats, yep. which is smart. Mm -hmm. And so, like, so they live in this prison. They they put them under conditions like the normal people. Yep. 
So that way they can have more empathy towards the common person. Uh huh. Oh, that is actually, I've never heard that concept. <laughs> yeah. Royal prison. I have never heard that, but it's smart. Yeah. It's smart. Uh, yeah. So if I can sum it up, this is like a, they, the, the royal prison, there were no other prisoners there. It was just. No. no. So this was like a royal. Prisoners, they live here. Okay. Yeah, there's a prison here. <laughs> so this was like royal boot camp. To, yep. to train them to be a great leader. Yep, yep. This used to have a half circle roof. Oh, so this used to have a half circle roof. Yeah, uh, the roof used to be like this. So okay, what happened to like it? This. And it collapsed because of the bombardment. World War Two. Uh, uh, sir. During war, yeah, World, World War Two. Yeah. I because can never see. The Italian it. came twice to Ethiopia. Once uh, uh, they were defeated by. Emperor Menelik? Yes, I've the heard. Great battle. Yes, Menelik II, I heard he's like, <laughs> the, II, I heard yeah. he's the man, the hero. Uh, yeah, and uh, there was a floor here, uh, and a spider stair from inside and from inside. Okay. And this is the... the oh, there. oh, there was a second floor? Yeah, there was it, a second so, floor. But, okay, so, oh, wow. So this is just the outer parts of, the, of his castle? Yeah. So he lived upstairs? Yeah, he lived upstairs. Okay. Wow. They never teach us any of this stuff like, mm -hmm. like that in America. Even us, uh, when they teach us, they teach us a little bit. If you're not a history student, you, will, you, won't know. you don't have any chance to know about this. Wow. As we continue our tour, we pass by several buildings that were mostly destroyed due to bombings in wars with the British and Italians. Besides castles, this complex also consists of schools, baths, lion cages, libraries, churches, music halls, and auditoriums. Okay, so right now we're heading to... To the archive. To the... Well, oh, not... The, okay, this is the castle and this is the archive? Yeah. Okay, what, when you say archive, it's like a library or...? It's like a library. Ah. In this library contained ancient Ethiopian books and manuscripts. Many of them were stolen and looted by the British during wars in the 1800s. Thousands of ancient books, treasures, and royal relics were stolen and hauled away on 15 elephants and hundreds of mules. These books and artifacts have never been returned to Ethiopia despite the many demands by Ethiopian officials. All right. And this is a lion cage that's uh, renovated by the last king of uh, Ethiopia. The, the grandson? The last, the last oh, king. Oh, Halassi. Emperor Haile Selassie. What do you mean a lion cage? Uh, they used to have a lion here. And this is the previous one, the old one. Oh. Well, well, why do they have a lion? <laughs> why have... It's a symbol of the oh. dynasty. Oh. A symbol of power. The lion of Judah. The lion of Judah. Oh. That's cool. So, so like even the eagle in US. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like she says, like the eagle in the U.S. Okay, all right, that was cute. All right, uh, that's cool. But well, see, we don't we don't keep an eagle at the White House. The Lion of Judah is the royal insignia of the Ethiopian Empire, and it's also the title given to its Solomonic emperors. The Lion of Judah became a symbol of the empire because King Solomon was from the tribe of Judah, which traditionally was symbolized by a lion. The Lion of Judah was so synonymous with the empire that it's often depicted on ancient European maps of Africa. The Lion of Judah was also depicted on the original flag of Ethiopia. The emperors of this nation have kept lions at their castles and palaces for centuries as a symbol to their Solomonic bloodline, but also to symbolize the power of the empire. So even, how many lions did you guys keep? One, two, three? Three, and in the back there is another, and also there are some caves, some uh, places, so uh -huh. we don't have many lions. So I'm a king, so like even like the, uh, the grandfather, he had the lions here. Yeah. Woo, that's tight. <laughs> the fourth castle was built by Emperor Dawit III, who was the great grandson of Emperor Facilitas. He is also known as Dawit the Singer as he constructed a music hall next to his castle and for his love of Amharic folk songs. Most of his castle was destroyed as well. 
Yeah. So, okay, you, you said this is a music hall for... The uh, fourth interest. The fourth? Like that there was a fourth one? Yeah. The great, great... Chef great. Great. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Oh. Right. How many uh, castles are in this complex? Six. So there's six... Okay, so great, six great, generation. great. generation. All of them are still here? Yep. Let's do it. Let's, let's go. I thought there was only three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So this used to be a main hall, and it was divided into two for the people who are religious, so they sing religious songs at that time. And this used to be the music hall for entertainment. So have you seen uh, the instrument Masinko around uh, no. the It's uh, an instrument with one string. It's really, really famous around the Okay. So they play it like this. Oh. <laughs> This complex is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, because uh, even when you see it on TV or on documentaries, they only show the first one. Yes, yes, so that's they, show you they don't show you the rest of them. Yeah. They got a lot of buildings in this complex. The fifth castle is that of Emperor Bakafa. He is also a great grandson of Emperor Facilitas, and he's the brother of Dawit the Singer. He, like many of his predecessors, built new buildings all around Gondar, as well as the big banquet hall next to his castle. Uh, so uh, this used to be a big uh, horse stables. At the time there was a partition for every horse. Oh, this is the horse stables, right? Yeah, the, the horse stables every day are for uh, every horse and they came in their own status and Park. that is uh, for the parking guy and he feed them and he put off whoa, whoa, the whoa, 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 whoa. you said a parking guy you mean yeah. tell me they had a valet for the horses ah uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> parking guy don't don't disguise don't try to trick me it's a valet <laughs> okay okay uh, yeah. Emperor Bakafa his name is uh, Messi Saget Messi means Messiah which means uh, anointed and the reason why they give him this uh, name is because he was uh, well educated and wise uh, that's why they named him here that, that's the Solomon uh, genes in him huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> and once uh, he uh, sometimes he dressed up like a peasant and sometimes he dressed up like a priest and he was the, sp uh, the spy himself because just to put it in layman's terms uh -huh. He disguises himself as a peasant, as a priest, and he goes about, and no one knows who he is. Yep. Just so he can learn the problems that yep. the normal man is facing. Yep. Uh, and then once he dress up like a peasant and uh, go for hunting to a place called Quara, then he was caught of malaria and slept in a peasant's house. Then uh, there was a lady who was uh, taking care of him and treating him. Then when he feel better, he came back and bring that woman and marry her. And marry her. Yep. He married a peasant. Yep. Wow. And this he, guy's yeah. story <laughs> and is this fascinating. Empress, of, of course. And this empress is one of the uh, best empresses in the medieval period. Uh, this empress, she's really uh, smart because uh, when uh, her, uh, her husband died after he ruled nine years, they do have uh, an uh, eight year old child. And her son became a king. But she was the one who's doing everything. You're yeah. going to say something about uh, the That is uh, the castle of Empress Mituwab and her son. And her son is... Uh, oh, the, the queen and her son? Yeah. Okay. And her, son, uh, her son's name is Yasu II. Yasu and the II. young one, uh, he became a king while he was eight year old. Ah, okay. He became a king, but his mom was still doing yeah. everything. she was the one who was doing everything. Okay. When Emperor Bakafa dies in 1730, his son Iyasu II is crowned emperor at the age of seven. Due to their son's age, Bakafa's wife, Empress Mentewab, is crowned co-ruler and wields great power during her son's reign as emperor. She builds the sixth and last castle in Gondar. After her son Iyasu II dies at the age of 33, her grandson Iyaus II is then crowned emperor. Much like his father, he is crowned emperor at a very young age, which leads Empress Mentewab to co-rule during the reign of her grandson. Iyawas was eventually killed, which sent the empire spiraling. Following the death of Iyawas, Ethiopian history goes into an era known as the Zimene Mesifin, which loosely translates to Era of the Princes. This was a period in Ethiopia's history when the central government had been destroyed. 
the country became divided into several regions and kingdoms with no central authority. The Solomonic emperors still lived in Gondar, but their power was mostly insignificant and unstable. The era of princes lasted 86 years and saw 23 kings occupy the throne in that time span due to drama and assassinations. This period of turmoil known as the era of princes comes to a screeching halt when the great Emperor Tirojus II is crowned ruler. He is known as a hero in Ethiopia as he reunites the different kingdoms back into the Ethiopian empire and he modernizes the nation. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section on what are your thoughts on these castles, the Ethiopian kings and queens, and if you learned anything new about African history. And don't forget to hit that like button in order to help the channel grow faster, as well as share this content with your friends and family. On the next Traveling Truth videos, I visit a church that's Ethiopia Sistine Chapel, then I head east to visit the rock carved churches of Lalibela. Then I'll head north to visit the ruins of the ancient Aksumite Empire. I visit a church that Ethiopians claim holds the Ark of the Covenant. And I also visit the Danakil Depression. And I visit an ancient church that's carved into the side of a mountain. See you guys on the next video.